What's up everybody and welcome back to another video. I am The Hobbyist and today I'm going to be showing you how to rebuild a Traxxas TRX engine. In this example I will be using the TRX 2.5 nitro engine, however this applies for the Pro 15 and the 3.3 just as well. So without further ado, let's get into the tutorial. Before we get started, let's go over the tools that you're going to need to rebuild your engine. As for chemicals, you're going to want a can of WD-40, and as an option, after-run oil and bearing oil. You're also going to need an 8mm nut driver. I've got a ratchet because the nut that we're going to be taking off is quite tight. Then you're also going to need a 2.5, 2, and 1.5mm hex tool, a zip tie, and channel lock pliers. So if you start out with the base engine, if you have an easy start, you're gonna see these three screws over here. If you have a pull start, then you're gonna have four screws. There's gonna be one in the corner here, but since I have an easy start, it's only three. So go ahead and remove those. Once those screws are removed, it's time to remove the easy start. Now be careful because the easy start is connected to the crankshaft. So I recommend slowly kind of nudging it out, being careful and mindful of the crankshaft. Now you see that came off just fine. So we put this to the side and I need to mention to this you, this is the one-way bearing. It only moves one way. That is why it is called the one-way bearing. Do not reverse this. If you do, then the engine will not start and you're gonna have to completely disassemble it again to fix this. So keep it in the easy start or pull start that it came out of and just don't touch it and you'll be absolutely fine. Now that we've got the engine on its own, you have to remove these four screws to remove the back plate. Now this is going to most likely take off this rod with it, so be mindful of that and make sure you do not lose it. So let's remove those now. Now that those screws have been removed, let's slowly remove this and be mindful this is probably going to come out with it. So I would recommend putting your finger here and then pulling out while pushing in. And there you go. So if we put this off to the side for a moment, you can see you've got this piece here, which is the back plate, and then this piece. As you can see, this ring just fell out. I was not careful. We need to make sure that we do not lose this. So be very careful when you're taking this apart. Do not lose these. And then while you've got this out real quick, just double check. Make sure that your O-rings are in good condition. Make sure there's nothing broken. Be mindful of these two notches up here. This is the top of the plate and yes it is directional so be very careful when reassembling this. Now that that back plate's off we can now see the piston and crankshaft assembly. Now we're going to leave that alone for a little bit and turn around to this clutch bell. Now the first thing you need to do is remove this e-clip and remove and then also remove the washer underneath so let's go ahead and do that now. Now that those pieces have been removed let's move them over off to the side make sure you know what goes with what. Now remove the clutch bell. Be careful not to drop the bearings out of there. That should come right out like so. If the bearings need cleaning or need re-oiling, then you can remove those and put bearing oil in them later. So move that off to the side and focus on the clutch shoes. Now these clutch shoes do go in a certain way, so take note of which way they came out and slowly lift them up. And if you're having trouble, kind of look from the side here, kind of just use it to pry it out like that, make sure that the spring doesn't come out, and here go the clutch shoes. Now we need to look at this eight millimeter nut holding on the flywheel. Now what you're gonna wanna do is take your channel lock pliers and grab the flywheel with them. And then once you're done, done that, take your eight millimeter nut driver, put it over, make sure it's set to the correct setting, and loosen it. I'm going to have to adjust the channel lock pliers, be back in a minute. Once that's loosened, then you should be able to just spin the nut off like so. You can remove the channel lock pliers now and you no longer need the 8mm wrench. So if we remove this nut here, now we need to remove the flywheel. Now this is on a cone washer, so you're probably going to need more than just pure arm strength to remove it, so I'm gonna remove that now. I would recommend not prying it, but kind of nudging it. Now I'll do the nudging technique and then I'll report back once I have gotten the flywheel off. Once you've loosened up the flywheel nuts, it should come off 
like so. If there's any visible damage to it, which there shouldn't be, then you can set that off to the side. Next up, we need to focus on this cone washer right here. What I prefer to do is just pry it off from the bottom. So we'll do that and then see there it comes off just like so. Now that the cone washer is off, we can start focusing on the top of the engine. If you have the standard TRX engine head, then you're going to want to remove the glow plug first. But since this aftermarket engine head has a separate plate for the glow plug, I don't need to. So we're going to take a 2.5 millimeter hex tool and unscrew all five of these screws. Once all five screws are out, we can move those off to the side and remove the engine head. Now with mine, here's that separate plate I was telling you about with the glow plug, so I'm gonna remove that as well. Make sure that you don't lose these pieces and make sure you do not lose this brass washer that if it does not come out with the engine head, it'll be on the rim right here. So put those off to the side and next we need to focus on the piston sleeve. So you can see the piston right here, definitely needs some cleaning, it's very brown, very dry. What we need to do is take a cable tie, put it through the top of the engine and out the exhaust port like so. And then you rotate it and as you can see it is slowly coming up. And one thing that I should probably mention before you go any further, keep tabs on this notch here. The notch you see is lined up perfectly with a little dot here. If you have one of the older 2.5 engines or a Pro 15 engine, then this notch will not be here. So take a knife and make a little scratch on the sleeve that marks where it needs to go. The sleeve does need to go back in the proper alignment. But if you have the little notch, then just make sure these are lined up when you reassemble. So now without further ado, let's continue. I'm going to use the channel lock pliers to grab onto these threads and be very careful not to damage them as I slowly rotate it, and as you will see, the piston sleeve will slowly come out. And I'm gonna do that off camera and then get back together. Once you've gotten the sleeve pointed to about here, you will notice that there's a little ridge. So take a flathead screwdriver and very gently pry it up. And then you can take your fingers and remove the piston sleeve. Now this is brass with a chrome coating and you need to be very careful not to warp this, scratch it, or damage it in any other way. So now we'll put off that to the side for later cleaning. Now you can just see that we have the piston left. So what you're gonna wanna do here is you're gonna wanna take the view here, turn it to top center or high center, not sure, however you like to call it, and then take a little screwdriver and just pop it off. So you can see that's come off. So now the piston should just fall out, which it has done. So now as you can see, this piston is very dirty and is in need of some maintenance. Now all you have left is the crankshaft. Now, it may be tricky to remove this if you have never opened the engine before. Now it should just pop out like that. If it doesn't, then you definitely have something clogging this up. So make sure to check this and make sure that it is in good condition. Now all you have left are these two bearings in the back here and the front right here. Check to make sure that they are moving smoothly. If they are not, then you're going to have to remove them and re-oil them. Mine, however, they work just fine, so I'm not going to remove them. Alright, so now that you have all the pieces laid out, you can clean them, oil them with your bearing oil and your after-run oil. Me personally, this engine looks a bit dirty, especially around here, and the piston. That should be shiny as it is on the sides-ish. So, I'm going to run some degreaser and let it sit there, and then I'll be back with you guys once everything's been cleaned. Now that all of your parts have been cleaned, it'd be a good idea to get some after-run oil or WD-40 and coat everything that has metal-on-metal -metal contact. That's the piston, the crankshaft, the piston sleeve, and then obviously the inside of the engine. You have to make sure this is all thoroughly coated with after-run oil, and I'm gonna do that as I reassemble it. So let's get the after-run oil ready to go. All right, so the first thing that you're gonna wanna do once your bearings are back in, have you removed them, is drop the crankshaft in like so. 
pull all the way through, that should be spinning very, very freely. So if that's good, then we're going to coat it with some oil. Once that's been covered with after run oil, next we're, we're going to want to put in the piston. So with this notch right here facing away from the exhaust port. So if we drop that in like so with the crankshaft at lower center, we're going to slowly rotate that up and take a flathead screwdriver and kind of ease that on. There we go. All right. And then make sure that you're not getting any binding whatsoever through there. And it's looking really nice. All right. So the next thing that you're going to want to do is go to the top and reinstall the piston sleeve. So if we put the piston at about middle, slide that on, make sure that the piston goes into it. And oh, try to get that notch lined up perfectly. Beautiful. Now things should be running nice and smooth. If you get a little bit of binding this, that's just because you need to pull this back when you use the piston. Now that that's all in check, let's coat all of that with after run oil. Once that's all coated, we're going to take our little piece right here, line up this little notch with the hole right there, take the top, put it through that hole, trying to be as gentle as possible. It might even be best to put get this previously aligned, then line it up with the notch. And once that notch is in there and lined up, push it through, like so. Now we're gonna tighten these four screws. Once you have the screws most of the way in, I would recommend them recommend that you tighten them in a star pattern. So one, two, three, four. Once that is done, then you are going to want to make sure that your engine spins freely. So these are nice and tight. Make sure it spins freely, which it does. If it doesn't, then take this plate off and you may have put in this little black washer here on the inside, which you do not want to do. Once that's done, we're going to go ahead and move over to the front for a minute. Now, what you're going to do is you're going to take the cone washer, slide that back on. It may get caught up on the threads real quick, but that's all right. That can come out. Just push it down like so. Next, you're going to take your flywheel, push that all the way down, then you're going to have to put the nut back on. So what you're going to do is take the channel lock pliers again, hold the flywheel, and then use your 8mm driver to tighten it. Once that's done, you're going to want to put your clutch shoes back on. Make sure that it is flipped over like this, so that this top shoe is connected to the left peg, and the bottom shoe is connected to the right peg. So if we push that back on, now the clutch shoe is on. Now you're going to want to take the clutch bell, put it on just like that. It should be spinning very freely. Then you're going to take your little washer, put it in like so, and then you're going to take the E-clip, get that on. Now that the E-clip's on, we can focus on the top. Now what you're going to want to do is put your engine head back on. I'm going to put on my little engine plate first. Now that that is on, I'm going to take the engine head, make sure, making sure that it is lined up with the proper notches in the proper places, which is right there. Once you've got that, you're going to drop each screw into its correct place like so and then once all of your screws are in what you're going to want to do is tighten them in a star pattern when it is facing away from you so you're going to be going one two three four five now that the engine head is back on what you're going to do is go to the back place your easy start or manual start on like that 
and then take your three or four screws and screw them into the back plate. Once that all three or four screws that you have on the back are securely tightened to the back plate, you have completed your rebuild. Congratulations. Now, hopefully this guide was helpful for you guys who wanted to rebuild your nitro engine. And thank you all for watching. If you did like the video, please subscribe. Leave a comment in the section below for what videos you'd like to see next. But that's all for today, everybody. Goodbye. I'm out.